Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, hope you're all having a good one. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do a clone this week. Jeez, I call myself King of Clones and I haven't done a clone in a long time. And I'm going to do a very a cheaper clone, or cheaper clone, but a very good clone. One of my favorites, if not my favorite citrus scent ever. Um, so what did I wear this week? It's called Reclaimed Eau de Toilette. Look at that. Can you kind of guess what it is? I'll give you a minute. The wood cap. Here's the box. It's a clone of Artisan Pure by John Barbartos. Uh, give you the write-up. This one's got a write-up. I haven't done that in a while either. Reclaimed is crafted for the man who's authentic. A revitalizing fragrance with refreshing citrus fruit infused with sweet woody ginger. The rustic characteristic is, in characteristic is enhanced by adding warm sensual musk. Um, I can't believe I haven't talked about this one or Artisan Pure really yet. I mentioned it a lot in my videos, but I haven't talked. Probably, no, it's not even probably, is my favorite citrus type scent. Um, my Definitely my favorite John Barbertos. Um, and would definitely be probably in my top five, if not top ten of all time since. Uh, this is just so versatile in its in its wearing. It's it's you can wear it casually, you can wear it formally, you can wear it to work, you can wear it to school, you can wear it to church, you can wear it just chilling on a deck. Uh yeah, a lot of people say, oh, but it's a summer scent. You can wear anything all year round. We all live in, most of us spend most of our times in climate-controlled buildings and environments. So, I mean, unless you're going to be at the beach all day or outside all day in the summer, then this is fine all year round. Oh, what a beautiful scent. Let's give you a spray of it. I fucking love this stuff. Just as much as the authentic. What do you get from? Well, we'll get into it. 2017. Uh, chords are citrus, aromatic, fresh, spicy, herbal, woody. Um, top notes are lemon, bergamot, mandarin orange, clementine, thyme, and marjoram. Um, the mid is petty grain and ginger. The base is woods, orris root, amber, and musk. Um, creamy. Slightly sweet citrus um, off the top. Beautiful, beautiful combination of citruses. Um, the creaminess, I believe, is coming from the marjoram. It can give a bit of a creamy vibe if done right. It is a creamy... You guys know what I mean when I say creamy. It's, 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 it's a descriptive word. It's hard to... But if you've smelled it before or smelled other creamy type scents, not milky or anything, but just a like a, like a soft, creamy citrus. And it lasts pretty much most of the scent. Um, you know, the top notes, I, I can't even really tell you because it kind of all just blends in together, really. Um, you get a big blast of citrus off the top. And that's generally what you smell for a good hour. Um, then the petty grain and ginger comes in. And the petty grain is giving it a, a bit of a citrusy woody vibe. Mixed with that ginger just enhances the citrus from the beginning. You know what I mean? And it keeps that creamy citrus vibe going. I mean, it, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> a couple hours later, more of the woods come out, <clears throat> more of the musk. I don't really get any orris root or amber from this or the authentic. Um, probably in there. Well, I mean, maybe the amber because I'm getting a slight sweet and salty vibe in the background. So maybe the amber might be, but I'm really not getting any orris root. Um, it's got a tinge of... herbalness to it um again that's probably coming from the time and the petty grain can do that too um 
But again, the, the, it, it's pretty linear. But when it's, you know, and that's a lot of people use that as a, a bad thing. That, oh, it's linear. Not when it smells this good. It, it, it just smells this good. I love it. I, I love this first day. I never smelled Iris and Pure until I bought it. I should say I never smelled it. I never owned Iris and Pure until I bought it a little while ago, a few months ago. Uh, but when I first smelled Iris and Pure, it was in Shoppers. I thought it was gorgeous. Um, didn't want to spend the $110 they wanted for it at the time. Um, simply because it's a Jean Varvatos. And up until this one, performance on most of his stuff has not been the greatest. So I kind of put it off. And then I found this and bought it. Um, compared to the original, the authentic, this is like almost as good. Um, longevity. A lot of people don't get good longevity, they say, out of it. Out of the authentic, I'm getting about six hours, six and a half hours. Out of this, I'm getting about four and a half to five. So, pretty comparable. The smell, I mean, I wish you could smell it through here if you haven't smelled it before. If you haven't smelled John Verbato, Cyrus and Pure, and you like citrus and creamy and woody types, then give it a try. Especially citrus, the main player. Um, beautiful. Um, the smell, it smells this dupe here. I'd say I used to do percentages. I'll do it again just for old time's sake. Um, 95% close. I mean, it is... The only difference is, is really that I, I, I would say is the Verbatos seems to have a a little more oomph to it. Um, the It smells a little, how do I say, a little more expensive than the dupe. Um, but for $5, this doesn't smell cheap. Not at all. Like I said, it smells like Harrison Pure, like really close. Other than... Iris and Pure smelling a little pure, I guess would be the, the word. Iris and Pure, pure. Um, this is great for $5. Did I even pay 5 No. $3.50. $3.50. At uh, a discount store, Dollarama. Surprise the hell out of me. Um, performance, again, like I said, not bad. Four and a half, five hours out of this, whereas I get about six, six and a half out of the original. Um projection the authentic projects a lot better i get about an hour and a half of decent nothing beast or solid but decent projection from the original um from this i'm only getting about half hour 45 minutes of okay projection um but it's a weird scent because even the cheap one i found doesn't really become a skin scent there's always that little bit of a couple inches you can always Without having to dig in real deep to smell it. Um, I, I just don't, I mean, this is definitely uh, what I would consider unisex. Um, whereas most unisex scents, for the most part, lean too feminine for me. And some of them a lot feminine. I'm looking at you, Tom Ford, Soleil Blanc. <laughs> um... This could definitely be worn by a man or a woman. It really does walk that fine line. Uh, <laughs> towards the dry down, though, when the woods and musk start to come out more, I find it becomes a little more masculine, but not overly. It could still be easily worn by a woman. I would love this on... I love it on me. I love it on a woman. It's just a beautiful smell. You're not going to smell it on a man or a woman and think that's... That's for the opposite sex. No, it, it smells like it could be and should be worn by everybody. I love it that much. I really do. <laughs> I mean, like I said, and when I say... Uh, I, we all know I'm not the biggest fan of... You know, unisex scents. Like I said, they smell a little feminine to me. And I think that's a lot reason I'm not big into most niches... Uh, cause a lot of their stuff, like they're trying to get as many customers as they can cause they're a niche house. 
Um, and definitely most independent artists, artisan. <laughs> artisan houses are definitely trying to get everybody. So they try to make everything unisex, and I find that most of it just comes off a little too feminine. Whereas a big designers, I mean big designers, well big designers, you know, you got Calvin Klein, uh, Paco Rabanne, Dior, YSL, uh, Davidoff, I'm just looking over here, Azero, um, you know, they, they, their design house, they have lots of money and lots of everything. They can afford to make a cologne for men and a perfume for women. So although they do have, those designers do have their unisex sense, they're few and far between compared to, comparatively to, like I said, niche houses and especially artisan houses. And this is not a big deal. I mean, those, especially artisan houses, they've got to make the money somewhere. So, but I just find they always come off a little too feminine. Um, yeah, guys, this is, this is a beautiful scent. Um, if you can't find John Barbatos or you can't find it for a good price and you come across this one at your local dollar store, discount store, wherever you might get it online. <sighs> I mean, Jesus, for the price, almost as good. I definitely go with Artisan Pure over it, but that's only because I could pick Artisan Pure up for like 20 bucks now. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, and you can tell too, they kind of did the wood. Well, it's not real wood, it's just a sticker on this, but like a wood type cap and a woody type box. You get a lot of woods, a lot of soft musk and woods on the base. <sighs> yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, it, it, it's. Yeah, if you come across it and you like citrus, and who doesn't like citrus? Just another thing. Let's say compliment factor through the roof. Um, well, I'm not joking when I say this week wearing this. I've got five compliments um, from women of every age. It, it smells great. I just can't believe I haven't really done a review on Artist and Pure or it's Stoopier yet. I'll do a review of Artist and Pure eventually. But I just wanted to get a dupe in because I haven't done a dupe in a while. And fuck, I love this stuff. Yeah, so that's it, guys. Um, hope you had a good week. Um, tell me what you think of Artisan Pure, The Authentic, or this dupe, or any other dupe you have of it. Do you like the smell? I, I can't imagine anybody not liking it. But I I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. I can tell you that. So, But for me, it's a... Almost perfection in a bottle. I love Artisan Pure. Beautiful scent. Performance could be a little better, but it's not bad, especially for the type of scent it is. Um, I'd love it if it lasted all day. I just love it so much. And you get wafts of it. This type of perfume you get wafts of as you're wearing it throughout the day, and you're wondering, I can still smell that. I can still smell that. Beautiful. I wish I could explain it better. I'm not a wordsmith. Just give it a try, guys. One of my favorites, if not... It might even be my favorite. I mean, I'd have to really sit down and think about it. Um, I start throwing in nostalgia and stuff like that, then it's not going to make that list. But just on based on smell, not performance, not nostalgia, not price, just based on smell, it's definitely my top five. I love it. I hope they don't go into business like I heard they were. That would suck to fucking buy bottles of it before it does because if John Barretos goes out of business, I can see Harrison Pierre going for a few hundred dollars a bottle once it gets discontinued. Yeah, I hate when that happens. All right, guys. Peace, love, be good to each other.